taming the fire, structuring your data in a scalable way. In the last section, we took a look at authentication options, managing data, and adding user accounts to our LiveLinks application. In this section, we'll start with an overview of how Firebase handles arrays. We will then learn about how to structure Firebase data to be scalable. Finally, we'll add voting to our LiveLinks application and associate users, links, and votes with each other by flattening our data. In this video, Understanding Arrays, we will learn how Firebase handles arrays by saving some to our Firebase database using the Chrome Debugger console. We will then explore some of the convenience mechanisms Firebase has built into it for dealing with arrays when it actually only saves objects as a rule. Finally, we'll discuss some of the pitfalls to avoid when working with arrays. We briefly touched on the fact that Firebase, due to its key value database structure, has no native support for arrays. But arrays are a large part of how data is handled in JavaScript, so there are ways to utilize them while staying compatible with Firebase. When we store an array in Firebase, it really gets stored as an object. Let's try it out. Open up the index.html page in your LiveLinks project in a Chrome tab and launch the debugger console. Create a reference to your LiveLinks DB at the arrays location. We will remove this later as we are only using it as temporary storage for the purposes of this section. Let's create an array containing the strings foo and bar. Set up a listener on the reference object for the value event and pass in a callback function that logs the output of the val method in the console. Send our array to the set method on the arrays reference object. That's funny. We see an array coming back. Doesn't Firebase store all its data as objects? Firebase does provide some conveniences when it comes to arrays if certain requirements are met. Namely, if an array contains keys that are mostly sequential. For example, store an array containing a series of negative one and one vote values at our arrays reference. Again, it looks like it's represented as a plain old array. What's going on here behind the scenes? In a new tab, open the Firebase data browser and we see that the array is actually stored as an object with its indices as keys, just as we expected Firebase to do. So why did we get back an array? The answer lies in the val method, and what was meant by mostly concurrent earlier. If Firebase sees that the keys are sequential integers, and at least half of those integers contain non-empty values, val will spit back an array instead of an object. Let's delete more than half of the values stored in our array and see what we get from a call to val. As you can see, Firebase no longer considers that object an array, and instead passes back an object containing only the keys that have non-empty values. So we can see that this strange behavior is true, but we don't know why. The answer lies in the concurrent nature of Firebase. If three different users were trying to change, move, and delete the value at a particular index in the array, it would result in a messy outcome due to the fact that Firebase has no good reference to the object once the key value relationship has been severed. As such, there are a few conditions under which using arrays is okay. If only one user will ever be writing to an array at a given time for the reason we just learned about, if the array is only overwritten in full by users concurrently editing it, a last in win scenario, or when we pay special attention when referring to any value by its index because of its mutable nature. Now we have a good understanding of how Firebase handles arrays, when to use them, and what to look out for when using them. The next video, Flattening the Data, will illuminate how to structure data in Firebase so that it's scalable and maintainable.